Hello everyone, my name is Katie. I am a third grade teacher in the state of Florida. And if you clicked on this video, it's probably because you're curious about how I organize things in my classroom and you're in luck because I'm gonna show you. If you're new here, I usually post like teaching vlogs, teaching tip videos, all kinds of things. So I'd love for you to hit the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel. Um, and if you're not new here, you know that I missed an upload last week. Oops. Um, January has been crazy busy. I actually haven't filmed in my classroom since the very first week, I think, that we went back. Maybe the second week. Um, so I'm a little behind on vlogging. And the next time I vlog, I'll have some updates for you guys that are, I mean, some pretty big updates because it's been a while since I vlogged. So Hopefully next week I'll be able to get back to like my normal vlogging schedule, but this week I'm taking a little bit of time to make a different video about how I organize things in my classroom. I put out a question box on Instagram and I got a ton of questions about organization systems that I use. I get questions about that all the time and I don't have like a dedicated video to it. I have some videos about like my favorite classroom items and my tips for first year teachers and I have videos about time management tips, but I've never done one on how to organize my classroom. I do have two classroom tour videos from my previous two classrooms. I haven't even done a classroom tour video of my third grade classroom. So this is gonna kind of be like a classroom tour video because when I asked, what are you guys curious about how I organize? It was basically everything. So I have a really long list that I printed out um, right here of all, of, it's not fancy. I'm just, this is the end of a normal school day. So welcome. Um, but it's got a list of everything that you guys were curious about how I organize in my room. And so I'm just going to go through the list and kind of walk you guys through each section and explain how I organize it as best as I can. Okay. And like I said before, this is the end of a normal day of school. I'm here pretty late. I've been grading, working on slides, doing all the things. Um, so my room is not as clean as it usually is because I haven't gone around and like tidied anything. So there's stuff places. This is like real life, what my classroom looks like. So let's jump in. The first question that, or like first area people were curious about was my filing for master copies. So I'm going to talk about this here and then answer some footage of what it looks like. So my school teaches with the Savis MyView curriculum. So I have files for each unit slash week for Savis MyView. And that's how I organize my master copies for my reading curriculum is anything I print just gets sorted. I made these tabs with little labels so they look nice and neat and organized. Um, and I just have one drawer that's dedicated to all of my reading materials. So anything I print, if it's a test, if it's an extra copy of a quiz, if it's um, a worksheet that I use to supplement that week goes into that file. So I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory for reading. For math, I don't really have the same system. We use Go Math, but I don't have a file per chapter. I would love to, that's a goal that I have maybe for next year. Um, but right now I have like one file that's exploding for addition and subtraction, one file that's exploding for multiplication and one that's exploding for division. And then I also have a file that I use to store all of our weekly math reviews, which is what we use for warmups. That way, anytime one of my team members makes copies for me, I just take it and I put it in that file. And those are my math files. And that's just what I made when I started in third grade last year. And I really worked hard on my reading ones last year. So organizing the math ones a little bit better would be a great goal for me to work on over the summer. So that's kind of how I organize my master copies. I am a file folder, hard copy kind of girl. I also have digital stuff that I'll show you later, but I love to keep my hard copies organized like this. My bottom drawer I use for things that are like themed. So I have a Martin Luther King folder, I have a Valentine's folder, a Christmas folder, and that's where I keep hard copies of those. Again, I have them, for the most part, I have them digital, but I have just a file for all of those special holidays and theme days. And I've had these since I taught first grade. So a lot of these things are the same. And I just kind of, every time that holiday comes around, I clean it out, clean shop a little bit to make sure the file's not exploding. But some of them still are, like my Thanksgiving file and my Christmas file. Uh, they're probably going to break soon, but that's okay. They have lots of good master copies in it. So that's how I file my master copies. I just use the filing cabinet and the divider tabs and that's it. Next question I got was filing copies for the future. Um, this one kind of goes with the first question. How do I file things that I'm going to copy? Well, they're all sorted by unit by week. So when I'm coming to unit three, week three, 
the things that I'm going to need to copy for unit three, week three are in that folder. Now, if it's something that I'm like, I want to copy that this week, that's when my handy dandy counter over here comes in handy. I usually like to have the counter cleared off. It's not super cleared off today, but as you can see, I have like this little section right here, this little stool. That's where my pacing guide always sits is on this green stool. And then right there where my computer is kind of in front of my toolbox, you can see there's a stack of papers and then my computer. Anytime I have something that I'm like, I want to copy that today or tomorrow, I stack it there with a sticky note that says like to copy. This is how many copies I want front and back, whatever. Um, so it's like in the forefront of my mind and it just sits in a little pile right there. So those are my two copy papers. But if it's not like I'm copying it today, then it's sorted in those file folders that I showed you earlier. Okay, the next thing, while we're talking about papers, the next thing you guys were curious about were my weekly copy drawers. So I'm gonna move the camera over here and show this to you. There we go. Okay, this looks wonderful. Weekly copy drawers. So after I've copied things and like when I'm planning for my next week, I'll always do my weekly spread, which I have tons of plan with me videos if you're curious for how that works. I'll do my weekly spread and then on Friday, I come and I fill my drawers for the week. So my Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are looking pretty empty because I've already taught Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Um, Thursday's empty too because I don't have any new copies to give to my students. It's things that they already have in their organizer files. But Friday, you can see anything that I'm teaching that day, I put in here, stagger stacked in order. So like I start in the morning with math. So here's our math big mix that we're doing first. Here's our math weekly review quiz that we're doing next. And then we're also doing some activities and reading. So here's the reading copy that we're doing. And here's the other reading copy that we're going to be doing. They're stagger stacked like this. So it's like one, then the next, then the next. So it's nice and separated. I do have them with paper clips right now, but I don't always. So stagger stacking them helps. Now I will say I've had these drawers. I actually shared about these, I think in one of my classroom must have videos. I've had these drawers for six years now. They're wonderful. I do have like the wide size. So the drawer size is like 12 inches by 12 inches. Usually if you're going to the store and you're just buying the average ones, they're going to be like the eight and a half by 11. And so then you can't do the stagger stack. So if you want to like stagger and do one here, one here, one here, you got to get the wide drawers, which are the 12 inch wide and 12 inch deep ones. And I love these. I just made the labels with my Cricut. Like when I was a first year teacher, it was one of the first things I labeled with my Cricut and they have stayed the same ever since. They're also nice because it gives you like a little bit of extra counter space. So up here I have like a tray that is my catch all tray. Anytime I get a handout, a team agenda, anything like that, it goes into the catch all tray and I clean that out quarterly. So at the end of the nine weeks, I go through and recycle anything I don't need and try to find a more permanent home for things that I do. Sometimes they end up staying in the catch all tray. Um, my top is just like random assorted things like the books that I put up here are up there. Um, just like a sticky note that has like our AR levels on it. Stuff like that is on there. Um, and then tapes, my notebooks, and then my pins just sit on top. But that's how I file the copies that I'm using for the week and keep those nice and organized. I know a lot of people have Tim drawer carts and I've just found in the classrooms that I've been in, I don't have like the extra floor space to keep that Tim drawer cart, but I have had lots of counter space. And so this works great for counter space. I just bit my tongue. Okay, we're good now. Um, this works great for counter space. I also am sitting here realizing I could totally stack these and have like one here, one here, and then have extra space right here on my counter. Something to think about for next year because um, they're stackable as well. So if you have counter space, I would recommend this. If you're more of a floor space and you don't have as many counters, the tin drawer cart from Michaels I hear is great for organizing your copies for the week. All right, let me get my list and my bubbly, my caffeinated bubbly, because <laughs> I'm tired. I'm tired, y'all. Ooh, this is fun. The next thing that you guys were curious about is like where I put all my stuff when I'm teaching. So I call this Grand Central Station on my list, which is also known as my front teaching counter. So let's move over there and take a gander at this Grand Central Station. This wonderful piece of furniture was gifted to me by one of our second grade teachers who no longer needed it in her classroom. I am unsure on if she will ever ask for it back. And if she does, I'll just buy something to put there. But it looks like one of those um, cubby containers from Target. So nothing super special or fancy, but it does have four compartments and I use the four compartments for four different things. So I'm going to try to show it to you the best I can. I'll enter some footage of it as well. So my top shelves 
and they're not super organized right now because this is at the end of the day of teaching. I usually kind of go through and make sure it's straightened up at the end of the day and I haven't done that yet. But my top shelves are for things that I'm taking and I'm putting under the document camera or I'm taking and I'm looking at and referencing while I teach. So this one, I have my bucket with all my markers for chart paper and when I'm doing charts up here, it just lives here. I also have some multiplication flashcards because we've been doing those. And then like my place value blocks are randomly in here because I've had to like put those up under the document camera in a pinch. So that all sits here. Then the rest of this shelf is dedicated to language arts. And that's it. So these are the hard copy of things we're doing for language arts. So we are doing unit three, week three. So I have a like teacher copy of the packet. So when I'm like, okay, let's go over our work for the day. So you can see your independent work. I can just pop that up and show them the example. I also have the teacher copy of our text for this week. So when I'm like, oh, I need to put the text up on the board, which usually I do it digital, but if I put it under the document camera, I've got that right here. Um, I also have a copy of the note page that we've been working on. So if you can't tell, this is like a master copy of everything that we're doing sits here so I can put it up under the document camera whenever. I also kind of keep the extras there. So I have like multiples of these and multiples of these. That way if a student's like, I can't find my, or I lost my, it's either gonna be here or in my extras drawer that I just showed you over there um, with my Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And then like, here's our word study list. So anytime I'm wanting to do word study practice, I just pop up that list and we're good to go. And again, this one's language arts. Underneath it, I have my TEs for language arts sitting out here. Um, and I also have any other books like assessment books that came with the curriculum here, workbooks that came with the curriculum here. And then I also have like my go math, my math TEs are here and they kind of spill over over here because I have a lot of TEs. So they're all right here for reference. I use the digital stuff more than I do for those. Now, if we scoot back a little bit to the back one, it's the same exact thing, except it's for math and for science. Oh, this is looking a little bit messy. Let's see if I can fix that. Okay, so it's the same thing, but it's for math and science. So I have my math TE because I use this when we check our homework to go over the answers. I have our 99 math sheet that I've been working on because I um, pulled that up and I put it under the document camera often. And then I have our times four times tables. I also, also usually have my, um, here it is, maybe. Yeah, here it is, it's closed in my TE. Our warm up page that we've been working on for the week. So in the morning, I can just pop that into the document camera. It's kind of holding my place in the TE right now. Um, so that is all I keep on this shelf. And then if I have any science, like masters, I keep them there just so it's easy to access them and pop them up. The only other thing I have on this shelf is my curriculum came with a lot of read alouds, exhibit A, exhibit B, Exhibit C, just some random read aloud chapter book things. And I keep all of those here so they don't get confused with my classroom library. Now let's look at the top of Grand Central Teaching Station. Okay, when you look up top, it's nothing fancy. I have my wireless keyboard here. Currently, I have the pin for my smart board, which got installed yesterday. It's a new board. We'll talk about that in my next vlog. Um, but currently, I have the pin there. Usually, I keep it in here, but like this new pen just looks like it's gonna blend in and I'm gonna lose it. I'm really bad at losing these. And by losing them, I mean I put them around the room. I've got my document camera up right now, right here. Um, I just have this, which has any kind of utensil I could ever need. Some that I've never used, some that I use. It's just a random pot of utensils. I have my equity sticks with student numbers on them so I can pull and call on questions. I have a dice. Honestly, I should put it in there so it's not like just rolling around. Um, this was because my board was down yesterday. So these were my lesson plans from reading yesterday. And then I usually keep some sticky notes here so I can keep track of students who I need to pull for intervention or just for anything I need sticky notes for. And then this is the light that goes to our disco light, which it's really hard. Let's see, here we go. There you go, disco. So I keep this over here. So anytime we're doing brain breaks, it is close by. Now up on the ledge, I have our read aloud that we're doing during snack, a read aloud we did that week as well with my pizza pointer and our birthday glasses and all of those things sit over here. So this is like where I teach. And of course, my rainbow stool that I sit on to teach. Um, I've really been tempted to buy some more of these on Facebook Marketplace and paint them for people. Um, let me know in the comments if you think I should do that because I found them cheap on Facebook Market and this one was really fun to paint and I use it all the time. I sit on it every day. It's like my favorite. So that is my grand 
teaching Central Station. Okay, is everybody still with me? I know I'm talking a million miles an hour. Just checking in. Next thing you guys had questions about, and these don't look very organized right now, but they were my cubbies. So let's take a look at my cubbies. We're gonna just take a grand tour of what they look like. First, I have this section over here. So what this holds right here are nonfiction texts that are mine personally from my classroom library. Um, and then children's dictionaries right here. Down below, these are nonfiction texts, which I actually kind of need to look at. I forget that I have them. They're from an old curriculum, um, but I should look at them. These are gonna be great when we do informational texts. Note to my future self, I need to remember these are here. They're sorted by topic for science. So these are physical science, life science, earth science, space and technology, and then social studies books. So those are kind of just curriculum ones that were in my back closet that I pulled out here so I could use them and then I forgot about them. Okay, coming closer. Whoop. Um, these are class copies of Charlotte's Web because we did a novel study. Gosh, this angle. Because um, we did a novel study for it and I was like, that's a good place just to keep all the Charlotte's Webs. So that's where they are. And then down here, currently I have, these are my, like my babies, my chapter or read a lot books that I don't put on my bookshelf for my students to touch, like Alma and the Worry Stone, um, our class family, my Nuffle Bunny books, books that I like to use for read alouds that I don't necessarily want my kids to like destroy in the library, but I will read it and you will love them. But that's where those live. Um, they used to be over on my counter over there, my side counter, but I moved them so my intern would have space this semester over there on that counter. And I actually kind of like them here better because they're a little bit out of the way. So I'll probably keep them here because the collection just keeps growing and growing, growing of all of these books that I just love that are really nice, nice books. And I have so many books on my bookshelf. So don't worry, my kids aren't like lacking in the book department. Moving right along. Next section of cubbies. Um, this is actually an old textbook that I need to recycle because we've already finished and ripped pages out of it. So it is donezo. But I keep my students' textbooks here because I do just rip the stories out because there's not a lot of room in their desk and I would prefer to do that except for math. I give them their math textbook. But here's the second half because our math curriculum has um, two math textbooks this year. It comes in a volume one and a volume two. So that's right here waiting for when we get to volume two. And then here are their my view books. So when I need to tear the stories out, here's the reading ones and here's the rest of the reading ones and the science ones. These are just two random cushions that I used to use when I taught first grade and we had to read self-center and kids could take them around the room to read. Maybe one day we'll read around the room, but for right now they just read at their seat and that's fine. Moving right along. Next cubby. We have privacy walls. They live up here so my students can access them whenever we take quizzes and tests. I have these containers because for a hot minute last year, ooh, they're dusty. I thought we were gonna do individual, or like caddy supplies at each table. And so I hunted these down because I wanted the white ones from Target. And I don't do table supplies anymore, but they're right here and it might come in handy like if we do crafting. So I'm just not a table supply girly. And I learned that but they're nice, so they're still here. And there's, oh, there are some things here. There's an extra paper tray because I got, I had this one before I had the gray one I showed you earlier. Um, and then this is something that another teacher was giving away. Those are so nice. They're perfect for math manipulatives. And I have one at my teacher table and I was like, those will come in handy. So it's just extra storage. Moving right along again. Here we go, next cabinet. Um, this is where we start in our stem bins. Anything I have that's extra storagey is kind of here too. So these are extra, they're like the little photo containers from Michaels that I've used for centers and things, but I have them here in case I ever need them. And then these are the baskets that I used to put under my students' chairs when their desks didn't have a lot of storage and we would put our Chromebooks in them. They're still in good shape, so I just shove them back here. Those are from the Dollar Tree from Michaels. It's just extra if I ever need it. Um, these things actually should be over here with my paper, but... Um, I'll put that over here. It's just my extra long paper. Um, now I'm into stem bin land. So here are my stencils for stem bins, my pixel bricks for stem bins. I shared a lot about this in a classroom setup video, so I'm not gonna go through all my stem bins right now, but you can see this is where they're organized, kind of. A stem bin, a stem bin. They do all have labels if my students place them outward. This is where I keep my extra 
construction paper. I have one bucket that's full pieces of construction paper, and then I have one that's just scraps from random projects. So when I want to, the students to like cut things out or we're just making something random, I'm like, you can use any of the scraps. Moving this way, we've got more stand-ins right here. You can't tell. My students do a decent job at organizing them, but they don't always turn the labels back out. If it were me, I'd turn the labels back out, but I'm not going to be that super duper picky. But look how beautiful it looks. Look how beautiful it looks when the labels are turned out. Okay, one more shelf of stem bins, y'all. I'm just dragging my bottom on this carpet right now. Um, these and these and these and these. Okay, so that's all for my stem bins right there. Um, so after my stem bins, which take up like one, two, three and a half rows or so, we get into school supplies. And this is where my kiddos put their extra supplies. Pretty self-explanatory. People colored crayons, extra expo markers, our dry erase, our dry erase sleeves and boards. I also keep extra erasers here with the expo markers because that makes sense. Um, extra colored pencils as we need, which we didn't do colored pencils this year, so there's only a few in there. Um, rulers for when we use rulers and extra scissors. These baskets are from Hobby Lobby. They're in the spring shop collection. They're on sale like every other week. Love them, hot glue the labels onto them. So it's nice. And then the last little bit of my cubbies over here while I'm over here, the rest of the extra supplies that don't fit in the cubbies. I've got a drawer full of glue sticks, a drawer for a liquid glue, pencils, erasers, markers, crayons. So that's where my like extra supplies live. And then my students have some in their boxes as well. So that kind of takes you through, I guess this is kind of cubbies too. Because my mailboxes, I have a basket for sticky notes, highlighters, index cards, and then extras in case I ever have some other random supplies pop up. So that's kind of how my cubbies in my classroom are organized. Coming back to my list, the next thing you guys were curious about was my classroom library. I'm completely going to defer to another video to share how my library is organized. I have a whole video on how I organize my classroom library, but... Here it is, it's on this bookshelf. I go in alphabetical order with stickers on the spines, okay? And I'm linking the classroom library video in the cards above so you can see my whole process of organizing it. It gives it to you in great depth. The top is just for read-alouds that are like monthly themed. Um, so I have like snowy ones out because today was the last day of January. I need to switch them to February books. But ta-da, and then the bottom shelf is chapter books. The rest of it is alphabetical order by author, label on the spine. There's my classroom library. Moving right along, checking my list and getting another sip of bubbly. Aha, the craft supply cabinet. This is a good one. I spent a lot of time in my classroom setup series like considering how to organize this. So I have a lot of craft supplies. I keep them in the cabinets over here on this side of the room. Here are said cabinets, okay? So this one is craft supplies and this one is craft supplies. All right, let's go through it. So here's the top one. As you can see, I have these boxes that are from Michael's that hold various things. I have this tray that's also from Michael's. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't looked at the things in this tray in a very long time, but I have craft supplies there. And then these are the things that didn't fit in boxes like bags, <gasps> shaving cream. Somebody asked me if I had that this morning and I said no, and I do, I didn't even know. Um, popsicle sticks and tacky glue. And then my like hot glue guns sit here with the hot glue gun sticks because they don't fit in a box. Um, paint brushes are overflowing, but here's my box of paint. A box of command strips. I have a box for tissue paper and watercolors. One for pom-poms and puzzle pieces. Okay, so it's kind of organized. At least everything's stored, right? Okay, so now we're going to the bottom. The bottom looks a little better in my opinion because um, I have a little bit more boxes. More of those same boxes from Michael's. So you can tell it looks a little bit better. Um, this is like yarn and string live in this one. This one is currently open, but I keep straws and more lunch bags in here, apparently, that I didn't know I had. Um, but there we go. The rest of them were up top. This one has assorted items, like a couple pieces of felt and some rocks. They're kind of like nature items that I've used for things. Pipe cleaners, extra ribbon, and then fabric pieces. This is stuffing, cotton balls, and there's one thing of twine. This is beads and foam stickers, okay? This is all stamps. Stamps, 
stamps and then that's clay and this was just kind of up here and way in the back i have more watercolors so that's what this bottom cabinet looks like it's pretty organized all right while we're over here on the cabinets let's just move right along to my cabinet above the sink this is where i keep things like and it's kind of organized i wouldn't say it's a it's a hot mess the top is for things like napkins and foil and coffee filters and plates um, the middle has my forks and spoons, and some toothbrushes, um, one extra baggy box that I guess now will fit down here, and cups. So there's that. And then Ziploc baggies and my Band-Aids and toothpicks and then magic eraser. So it's not too bad. Underneath the sink is where I keep like my wipies. Ta-da! I've got borax for when we make slime. I've got gloves. Um, that's where my spray paint is, my duster refills, my wipes, my tissues, all of those things kind of live under there. It's not a very big cabinet. Um, and then still moving right along in the cabinets, the third one up top is for classroom games. So I got those for the most part to all fit in one cabinet there. And then the bottom is also kind of like activities like Legos and chalk and marbles and Frisbees. Some of those like bigger, bulkier kid activity things. All right, I am blessed with lots of cabinets. So if you look at the other side, I have more cabinets over here. So on this side, I kind of have an overflow of um, toys and games. I also have candy and then just some random supplies. This is kind of like a catch-all cabinet right now. I'm going to be totally honest. This one has card games and that has dinosaurs. And the pumpkin holds candy at Halloween time. So, And this is just like random stuff like spider rings, um, extra puzzles for stim bins, which shouldn't be in there, but they are. There's more extra puzzles, so it's kind of a mess. So we're going to close that back up. Underneath is where I keep down here. The bottom cabinet has all of my extra notebooks and um, notebook paper. And then moving right along, this cabinet on the bottom holds my Cricut. That's about it. And like an extra bin that's empty. So it's just Cricut stuff, which used to be on the counter, but... Not anymore. And then moving to the last one, this is extra, um, like my school laptop that I don't use very often, I'm gonna be honest. Oh my goodness! Here's my extra student bins. I knew I had extra ones, I bought more of these. Well, there you go, I learned something new. And then these are like folders, so if I get a new student, they're already prepped from Meet the Teacher. And so they've got all the forms that those kiddos would need. Coming back up to the top. Sorry if I'm making you guys dizzy cabinet this one has notebooks that my students brought in at the beginning of the year labeled ready to go when we need them this is usually my extra snack cabinet counter it's pretty empty and then down here I have um, these are like my plastic things that I use during meet the teacher and open house to display signs my birthday stuff for the calendar and like stickers and stuff and then my birthday goodies that I've pre-made for all my students birthdays and then the last cabinet over here that we haven't been through is also kind of a catch-all um that's an extra binder even though it says sub binder it's not my sub binder anymore extra sit spots this is like magnet tape and extra magnets up here sheet protectors labels are up here ping pong balls i don't know tape this is kind of a catch-all right here and then this has my stickers and like name tag stuff and then this is all my calendar stuff organized by month stickers 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 Okay, I think that's it for the cabinets. Ask and you shall receive. That was all, how many cabinets do I have? 12 of my cabinets. So that was a little intense and now I'm like sweating and I'm running out of breath here. Um, next thing you guys were interested in. So we got the library, we did craft, we did above the sink, we did games, closet. I am so hashtag blessed. I've got a big old storage closet and I'm gonna walk you over to it. Again, if you watched my classroom setup series, you've seen a lot of how I organize my closet. Um, and so that would be helpful if you're like trying to think about how do I even go about organizing something. I thought through it a lot there, but I'm gonna turn this camera around and show you my closet. It's not perfection, but it's pretty organized. Here is the cabinet. It's actually beautiful. Um, so the first thing, first piece of advice, if you're moving into a classroom, make really basic labels for the containers that they've already got. So these are basic labels for things that they already had in here. Cubes, clocks, calculators, Tetris shapes, 
etc. Fractions. So these are all my fraction tiles, place value blocks, and geo blocks. Nice milk crates from Walmart. Just a simple label that matches these simple labels. So that makes it look super organized when you do that. Um, if you go down to the next shelf, it gets a little bit crazier, but I have some multiplication things. Here's the rest of my extra puzzles. I really need to put those with the other extra puzzles, but they were lost for a minute. An empty lock box that I use for like math unlock the box challenges, multiplication war cards, division cards, empty bins, inch tiles, inch tiles, more flashcards, um, and then things like bingo multiplication bingo back here um and then here's like my balances that we use for science okay um if i go down one more i've got a whole marker refill i have a blocks rock game which i have in my stem bins sometimes um some extra items that i just don't use anymore my emergency bag and then these are like extra fox files from years past that i have i should just give them away to students because it's a kind we don't use anymore here's some more of those readers these are like the science readers that i don't have sorted um and then just extra book bins and things that just aren't very organized. Extra tissues, things like that, that don't have a home, along with this floaty from April Fool's. Um, I do have my borders hanging on a command hook with a binder strip, so that's good. Um, hats that I was gifted for room transformations if we do detective stuff. I don't know what the metal tins are for, but I threw tissue boxes up there because I had so many, and those were just here. Um, pillows, which again, I use kind of, like I said, when I used to do read to self, this is the box for my wheel of excellence. I have a lot of these containers because if you watch my, um, classroom must haves video, the first one, or my first classroom tour, I used to sort all my math games in here. So most of this stuff is stuff that I use in first grade land. So math games or Ziploc bags that hold things that I used to use in math. Um, same with some binder or those like dry erase sleeves and like number lines and cards that I made for math games that I no longer use but it's there and then these are also flashcards for addition and subtraction that are all sorted that I no longer use because I use them in first grade these are 3d shapes I don't know why they're in here my spider from Charlotte's Web um going down again more first grade things because I had so many resources for vowel teams CVC words digraphs blends short vowel sight words they're all organized into these buckets um, letter recognition because I used to teach first grade and I can't get rid of it because they were all such great resources. So I repurposed them into these buckets. I actually need to pull this one out because we're about to start doing vowel teams and see if there's anything helpful in there. Um, and then again, my short vowel cards because I can't get rid of it. Word building things. They're all good things. Some more like decodables. I can read books that I have multiple copies of. Um, Curious George books that didn't fit on my shelf. That's just a pile of social studies stuff that I have. Science stuff and old curriculum stuff that I didn't know what to do with when I moved in here. Um, a calm down bucket that I'm not using currently. An origami thing. Ooh, I should pull that out. My kids would love that. Would freshen up the stem bins a little bit. So it's an old stem bin. Old stem bins. That basket holds all of my Pokemon room transformation things when I do Pokemon measuring. I use this in first grade to hold sight words. I don't use it anymore. All of my anchor charts are back here. Whoa my laminated anchor charts. Um, and then this is my Christmas bucket. It has all of my Christmas supplies in it. And then usually this bucket right here sits on top of it. This has all of my garlands from the Dollar Tree that I use for different months. Um, I just put my Valentine's one up. So that usually lives right there. And that's like my storage closet in a nutshell. There's a lot of stuff crammed in there. But as I said earlier, my face is red because I'm getting so hot and tired. As I said earlier, I um, it's pretty organized. It's not the neatest and the nicest, but everything kind of has a home and kind of has a place. All right, the last thing that you guys were curious about are my digital files. So I'm going to do like a screen recording of my digital files and show them to you the best that I can so you can kind of see how I organize those. Um, I am a fan of using folders and way over organizing the folders so I can find everything when I need it. I used to use Google Drive and now I use OneDrive at this school. They're very similar. My folders are virtually the same, um, but I'll give you like a little tour through my folders so you can see how I organize things digitally. I also am a huge fan of using bookmarks on Google Chrome, so I'll show you my Google Chrome bookmarks as well. 
Okay, here is a quick overview of how I organize my digital files. There might be some noises in the background. David's working at the house because um, I'm filming this at home. But this is my Google Drive version. Remember, I use OneDrive for my classroom now, um, but this is what it looked like when it was on Google Drive. It looks almost exactly the same for OneDrive. So my first tip is to always name your folders in number order. That way, the one that you want to stay at the top or the most important one is always at the top when it's in alphabetical order. So like my resources folder is my most frequently used folder. Therefore it is number one. That way when it's sorted by alphabetical order, it always appears at the top and nothing comes up above it. Then I've got like testing schedules, parent communication, classroom setup, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm not, I don't have all the folders cause this is like the abridged version that I downloaded when I left my previous district, but you can kind of see. I also love to use the rainbow color coding. My resources folder is probably my most crowded one. So if you open that one up, you can see, again, I use the rainbow order because I think it looks pretty, but also I use the colors. So I wanted my submitted plans to be, or the numbers. I wanted submitted plans at the top, so it's number one. I wanted my reading slides to be at the top, number two. E-learning, writing, centers, reading, math, et cetera, et cetera. Um, another folder that's really full that I can show you is reading. As you can see, it's folder after folder after folder. So my reading folder has all the different categories for reading. It has alphabet, assessments, comprehension, fluency, grammar, high frequency words, qualitative reading inventory, PDFs, read across America stuff, um, all kinds of things. Um, so another folder I could click on would be phonics. And you can see I've got phonics sorted by all of these different are controlled, phonic sentences, open versus closed syllable. And then if I click on a folder in there, then you see the products. Most of them are freebies because I love to find freebies, but some of them are also things that I might've created like in Google Docs. There you go, that I used for centers. So it's all there, it's all super organized. And then I can just backtrack myself back out of the folders and you kind of get the gist. Like here's my read or my math one. It's got all the different categories. You open it up and it's got the resources for those categories. So that's kind of how my digital files are organized. That's at least the gist of it. Folder after folder after folder, number order and color coded. <laughs> okay, and then I also was gonna show you an overview of my bookmarks. As you can see up across the top, I'm a huge fan of bookmarks. My favorite pro tip is most of the time the bookmark has its own little icon. And so if it has its own icon, I don't put any text with it because then it's like easy for me to keep a ton of bookmarks up here. But I have one for my Outlook email, for my OneDrive, for my Microsoft Teams. I don't remember what this one's for. I think it's for, oh, remove backgrounds. Like I can remove the background from an image if I need to. This is where we get our math fluencies. This is where we watch our morning news. Extra math, class dojo, 99 math, go noodle, happy numbers, ed learn, uh, not ed learning, ed club, I think for typing club. Um, this is a globe trotting kids. So it's like an interactive site where kids can explore the globe in different countries. Um, mystery science, Nearpod, Prodigy, Blue Kit, Sign Up Genius, Spotify. I just added this microphone one. I think it's for like guest author zooms we just got a like subscription for it so i don't know and then this is just like a youtube playlist that i used to use in the afternoons when my students were doing dismissal so my biggest pro tip is definitely use the bookmarks bar you can put your bookmarks in folders but i prefer them to be on the main bar and if possible i delete the text behind it so that it's just the icon because i have all of these bookmarks like ready to go oh great my computer's about to die okay perfect timing <laughs> So that's like my classroom organization in a nutshell. If you stuck through this whole video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know that you liked it. Um, I hope it gave you some organization tips. It's also just a good tour of my classroom so you can kind of see how I organize everything. If there's anything else you want to know how I organize or you're like, where did she put that? Ask me and I will let you know and I will update you in a vlog because it's like almost 530 and I'm ready to go home. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss my next video, which will hopefully be a vlog. If you're brand new here, thank you, welcome. I'd love to have you subscribe and watch some of my vlogs and my other videos. But as always, I will see you guys in the next one.